back when I first started fur shooting, I brought it up with my grandma because I wanted her to help me sew. And I was like, hey, can you can you help me uh, sew a bodysuit? I'm making uh, like basically a mascot costume. And she freaked out because she had thought I was joining this community of like weird people that would get together at meets and all just like get into a, a group fuck pile. Hi, babe. Hey, Mama. How you doing? I'm good, how are you? Good, good. Looking at all these pictures, never imagined it would be a furry. You look so young there. I still look young. Yes, you do. Yeah, hey, thank you. I kind of lone wolfed it as a kid. Skateboarding was always there for me. Art was there. I think it kind of broadened into fan fiction, and they all had animal characters in them. Just, I had all kinds of ways to escape. I feel like a lot of people find the fandom because they feel different. There's got to be somewhere out there on the internet just like me, and that they find exactly that. You never actually came out and said, I'm a furry. No, I, I don't remember making a big deal it was of it. drawing pictures of it at first, and then eventually you started saving, and I remember yeah. you desperately waiting for your suit to come. I slowly got more into the, the scene, so to say, just because of the people, and I eventually just went, fine, I give up, I'm a furry. I'm one of these guys, you know, they all seemed really, really cool, so I kind of just blend it in. I pretty much have to wing it because I can't see the board. I'm not gonna lie, uh, partying is the number one thing that most furs like to do. The furry population here was lackluster. There were not many furs. I thought, I'm gonna try. I've seen YouTube videos of a lot of furs going bowling. Let's try to go to our local bowling alley. Man, it's getting stuffy in here. Sure is. Hey, this is RK, and welcome to Culturally Effed. We are rolling, right? Oh. A lot of people feel furry has to be a certain thing, but in my experience, furry is animation, it's comics, it's cosplay, uh, it's all of these other weird aspects all sort of knotted into a big, messy ball. It's just gotta have talking animals in it. Wanna know what I'm drawing? Oh, I thought it was just a sex thing. Yeah. Is that a sex thing? You guys just have sex in those things, right? Just like... In 2000, significant point in furry history is when the CSI episode, Fur and Loathing, comes out and sort of paints the fandom as this like crazy sex fetish cult, which really, really diminishes the reputation of the fandom. Because obviously CSI is a documentary. Oh, people are so strange. They think that these furries are having sex with one another. Dig deep enough, yeah, you can find that, but that's not the case for Eric or any of his friends that I've ever met. We love you, boots. Oh. I really would actually prefer if, if people didn't know in my personal life that I do this. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but there are certain social connotations that kind of come with it. It just keeps things a lot simpler. People are way more excited about cartoons and cosplaying as their characters than they are necessarily to do sexual things within furry. There are, I think, eight animal heads in my room right now that are masks that I can wear. That's weird. You can not like it, that's one thing, but actually being outwardly cruel to somebody or being like, oh, you're a freak because of it, it's just like, just back off. I'm not hurting you. I've had two separate incidents where people have hit me in suit and like non furries, and I don't want to deal with that again. I had a cheerleader at a parade beat me over the head with a stick. Oh, don't do this to me today, machine. Because I make them, I definitely love them a lot. I put a lot into my work. It's Byzantian version two. I've got a work in progress here. This is going to be the same character as Byzantian here. Byzantine being my goals character. His personality is basically what I'd want myself to be, so he'd be less anxious, just more of a chill, laid back kind of character versus being like high anxiety like I am. We're going to Howl tonight. It's 
full of people that have that common interest of furry and be able to just hang out in a more casual setting than a convention. Powell is... I was expecting it to be a lot racier than it is. It's just like people dancing, getting drunk. It's just a regular party scene with uh, some fursuiters and other weird furry things sprinkled on top. There's like a bit of kink here, but they don't get into anything explicit. <laughs> Powell is somewhere where I can be me, where I can just dress up in my fursuit and just hang out with a bunch of fur friends and just be happy. My first one actually created itself. I'm a mom. My nickname is Fluffy. Mother Fluff. There we go. Mother Fluff. I, I believe I was a cat in, the past, in a past life, yeah. Oh, I know I'm human. I know I'm 100% human. It's just I wish I was a cat. <laughs> Got an itchy nose. Hold on. I'm more for, in it for the social than for the art. They're just positive energy to be around. Normal people would think, why would somebody want to be a different animal? You're a human. But they just don't understand, like, the connection that people have with animals it can be very, very deep and very powerful. It can be life-saving, even. Something about furry, you anthropomorphize everything. You start to sort of see everything as having its own little life. I know that I've always just said a furry is somebody that feels a connection to a cartoon animal. Hey, how's it going? Hey. I use my, my fursona as an avatar on online interactions, and yeah. that's about all it is to me, mostly. Yeah. Uh, and then there are the people who, like, identify very strongly spiritually with the, the, the type of creature they have made their avatar to be. It's more than just role play. If you're telling a story or you're describing a character or a personality or a trait, then it, for some reason, has more potency when you put it in the context of not a human shape, but an anthropomorphic animal shape. Disney figured that out <laughs> years and years ago. Furries are all over the place. I know CEOs, I know people that, that run banks, I know there are people that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not naming oh, names. No, no. There's a lot of baggage involved with being a furry. The fear that somehow it will... Well, not somehow, there's been proof that it's happened. You'll lose your job just because you're now associated with being a furry. Yeah. Uh, so this footage was just sent to us and features Hilda the Bambioid. So yeah, I haven't seen this before either. This is furry archaeology. You can't show this and suddenly say, oh no, no, it was all very, very well to do. No, obviously there was a, uh, some sexiness added to it like really early on. <laughs> to be honest, I have had sex with my tail and my head, but it's uncomfortable because it gets in the way. You're like huffing and puffing is... <laughs> um, I guess it's called yiffing. <laughs> How are you? We tried it, we're not really that into it, but we're still new into the fandom, so you never know. It can be done. It's not my cup of tea. I'm not that kind of furry, and I know a lot of people that aren't that kind of furries. <laughs> <laughs> you guys sure asked us a lot of questions. Yeah! Some people may disagree, but if you don't adapt a new character, then you're doing it wrong. Then you're just, you're just standing there with something on your face. Yeah. You're not a character. I'm just covered in this disgusting skin. There's a lot of fursonas based off of the individual's superego. It emphasizes uh, the good aspects of people's personalities, the, the aspects that they want to uh, build on and improve on and, and outwardly express more. Or how little they care about their bad ones. Or, <laughs> yes. I always knew something was different about me. It felt really wrong saying I'm a girl. I had started being a furry before I had even thought about transition. 
So I had a very masculine character. So uh, that kind of, it helped me realize more of the trans link. With a, with a fursuit, you can pad it out to have breasts or abs or whatever. Meanwhile, you have the opposite. So it, it, it gives people um, a way to anonymously express their gender identity, which is a, a huge thing, especially if you're stealth and you don't want people knowing that kind of thing, or you're not able to come out yet. Having something like this where people can have fun, but also be understanding of what you're going through is really important. I do see uh, Mother Fluff as an extension of uh, myself. She's angry. The cat is angry. Coming to a shelter is the only place that I can actually pet cats and see cats and nose boop them. You checking out my tail? I like to talk to cats because I talk to cats like I talk to my kids, very softly. Whenever I'm with my kids, um, my daughter is attached to my hip. It, it sucks not having uh, custody of them because uh, it makes me feel like I didn't try hard enough. I'm an angry mom, I don't have my kids, right? What kind of, what kind of mom would be happy without their kids? I've been depressed since I was about 12, and it's always, try this medication and then it doesn't work. Try this medication and it, I don't feel right when I take it, so I stop it. But when I put on my first suit, like, just when I put on my first suit, I feel so much happier. It's like a medicine that you just put on. I haven't cut since I have been a furry. I think I am winning, but yeah. The higher number generally wins. Yeah, you've won. I, I'm so far behind now. I fell off the back end of the game, so. I wanted to create sort of a safe haven where people wouldn't have to feel alone. I grew up alone. It was fine for me, but not everybody has that strength. So I thought the best way to kind of rectify that was to get as many people with things in common together as possible, as quickly as possible. And, and it worked. Met at a fur meet maybe about five years ago. Uh, we've been engaged for just under two years now. That's the thing that furry offers. Can you do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, success! If you don't fit the mold you were born into, well, you know, you'll fit ours. Silly costume, life-changing. If you look back in fandom history, people were calling Trekkies weird. Trekkies were the weird thing. Being huge in a Star Trek or huge in a Star Wars was freaky. Now that's like casual. It's like it's a, an initiation process for every different fandom or different uh, lifestyle or hobby. It, it's gonna go through a period where it's just made fun of for quite a while or beat to shit and then it's gonna be basically accepted. Uh, right now I'm drawing. It's YouTube people. <laughs> that's <us. laughs> so that gentleman you had in here a moment ago, uh, he and I have nothing in common. Yeah, that's what I can do when I wear a fursuit. <laughs> <laughs>